guys, to your DNVR Nuggets crew here at Nuggets Media Day. Harrison Wynn, Adam Mars, Brendan Vogt. My biggest takeaway from Media Day was probably something that we had talked about in the lead up to this thing as a theme that we would hear. It's that this team's thinking championship. They are. Michael Malone, Malik Beasley, Paul Millsap, anybody you asked, except for Nico Jokic, who said he doesn't set goals for himself today. <laughs> Not surprising, um, is it? No. Said that Go this up, team Jokic. is thinking about a championship. I can't say that I'm that surprised, but definitely notable how direct everybody was. Yeah, I think what I liked about it was they weren't running away from that topic, but yeah. at the same time, I think Coach Malone's teams, one of the things that he really hammers is that you don't win a championship today. It's got to be a consistent, it's more about building habits and going one step at a time. So they're not saying like, oh, championship, we're focused on the playoffs. They're focused on tomorrow's training right. camp and, and those types of things, but they aren't shying away from the fact that right now, anything short of a championship is, is really falling short. Championship mentality is yeah. what he calls it, right? And you, you take that approach one day at a time. And look, if you come one game short of the Western Conference Finals, as he said, why would you make the goal right. Western Conference Finals or right. just Finals? Frankly, that's selling yourself short. So it's not title or bust, Harrison. It's, okay, there's six or seven teams that think they have a chance. Why, why aren't we one of them? I think what the Nuggets feel like is that they're in the mix. Yes. They're in that yes. contending group with the Clippers, the Lakers, the Bucks, whoever you want to put in that contending group, Denver is in that tier. Would you? Who was the most bold about the championship prediction today? You know, I, I, I was, I'll say Malone. Um, yeah. I, I wouldn't say it was a prediction, but he did not shy away from it at all. Uh, he was he was ready for that question. Yeah, he I think, was. I'd not, I think he thought about his answer to that question last yeah. night, probably. Um, and this is a guy who knows that his team's good enough. So Jamal Murray bold. was very bold. Malik Beasley was very bold. Yeah. Paul Millsap just said, if things go a certain way, we could be holding the trophy at the end of the year. So, I mean, it's a team-wide shared belief right now. My, for me, I was really impressed with Michael Porter Jr. today. Mm -hmm. I thought... It, it, impressed because you know he's had the spotlight on him and a lot of what we were wondering is what's his attitude going to be like what kind of I thought he said all of the right things and it, it really seemed to me like he had a clear understanding of what his specific challenge is assimilating to this team and, and, and playing you know not as the main guy and all those things I just think that like no matter what like no matter how many times you fall it's, it's up to you if you're going to get back up even if you fall a million times like so for me it's just coming to the gym every day try to have a good attitude and, and do the best that I can, and um, you know, eventually my time will come. Like, I'm meant to be a basketball player, so I know eventually my time will come. I don't really have to stress a lot about it. I just got to work hard. Of course, it's just talk, but you know, I, I just felt like from a maturity standpoint, he seemed a lot older than than what he was last year. And you asked him, I think, what's the one thing the coaching staff is urging you to work on, or you're working on that you think can help you you know, get to that next level. And he said elite defense, yeah. which was not the answer I would have expected <laughs> Michael Porter Jr. to say. And he copped to that as much. He said, I've always thought of myself as a, a scorer, a playmaker. Now I'm learning to train myself, to think of myself as a defender. Yeah. Well, I'm sure I'm sure that's something Mike Malone would love to hear if he's, you know, listening to this. Because I'm sure he is. the starting small forward spot is up for grabs. Right. That's mm -hmm. something we learned today. Mike Malone saying there will be an open competition at starting small forward, and Michael Porter Jr. will be in that, and if he wants to win that job, defense, I think, would be a key. Yeah, for it sure. It doesn't sound like Jeremy Grant will be in that conversation. Just the sense I got today, nothing definitive, <laughs> but the sense I got was he's probably more of a power forward on this team. Although, guys, talking to Grant, he could barely contain his excitement about being here in Denver. Mm -hmm. In fact, he even referred to Oklahoma City as a sinking yeah, ship. Yeah, he did. Wow. I mean, uh, there's some things going on in, in Oklahoma. Uh, and uh, it kind of got rid of uh, a lot of different pieces. So uh, for me, it was just, I mean, it was almost good, you know? It was almost good to get out of the uh, sinking ship. So the I, context is going to be important, important for that. He talked yeah. about the whole team changing, the whole team not, changing yeah. not just <laughs> not just, like, just that he saw the writing on the wall. And yeah. I think there's relief for him to be in. Adam, you've talked about this. What is ironically now one of the most stable situations in the entire NBA, right. and that's being with the Denver Nuggets. Maybe not so ironic. I mean, I think one of the storylines across Denver right now is maybe the instability of the Denver Broncos. Mm -hmm. And I think what's what's is ironic about it, just from a historical standpoint, is. Right now, the Nuggets are run and, and just organized with this optimism and continuity, and they just look like they know what they're doing, like they're establishing a plan and following through with it. And today was just a continuation of, I think, the last four years. I think we know Jeremy Grant's going to come off the bench, but like he's going to be a significant contributor uh, for the team. And you ask everybody that was out here today how well he's going to fit, and from an on-court standpoint, from a cultural standpoint, 
I think the fit is uh, pretty seamless. What did you guys think? What, what was your takeaway about like the overall feel around this team today? Because I remember last year it was, oh, game 82 was still on our minds and we need to make the playoffs. What was your takeaway about just like what the overall vibe was around the team today? In a weird, I thought the team was focused and motivated and all those things, but in a weird way, this felt like the most routine media day. Yes. I was going to say relaxed. Yeah, relaxed Everybody and seemed very relaxed. It, would it be too much to say a vague, like, been there, done that? Maybe? Yeah. They're in the club like a, now. Yeah, you, know what I mean? club. you don't have to bark and make all these proclamations. That's why I thought, I asked about the, who was the most bold, because I didn't think any of them were necessarily bold. They respect what right. how difficult it is, but it's like, no, we are a championship contender. They, they, they said they're a championship contender, and nobody thought it was a big deal that they said. Right, it. right. Yeah, and it seems sure. like the mentality is no longer how, how do we necessarily win the most of 82 games. It's how do we prepare ourselves for 110 games, as Malone said. Yeah. And so I get the sense that that shift has taken place. Last thing I'll say is I thought Gary looked great I, physically. I mean, just they talked about Malone talked about his presser. Gary looks like he's come in more at his playing weight look cut. Gary always looks impressive. That guy's never yeah. physically not looked. But I thought he looked especially lean and just chiseled and, and mid-season form, Gary. I, I'm excited for it. They always make fun of me when I come back because I <laughs> weigh too much. Um, so I, this summer, uh, I stayed like my, my same playing weight like, throughout the whole summer. I tried to like, stay right around you know, 210. And uh, you know, my body feels great. You know, I cleaned up my eating. And, uh, you know, we really tried to put an emphasis on that this summer. Malone did say that Gary's goal this season is to play 80, as close to 82 games a season as possible. Hmm. It's interesting that Gary's in that spot now. It does seem like, you know, they're aware of him as a potentially injury-prone guy, as we're yeah. discussing. Yeah, I don't know what Dr. Harrison would think about that. <laughs> well, I mean, it was an exciting media day, but you know, not like a lot that's up in the air with this team. Like, I came into this thing with the idea that Nuggets are pretty settled. We know pretty much what the rotation is going to be like, and. I mean, the season is here. You could argue they're the team that has the least to figure out of anyone in the league right now heading yeah. into next season. And yet the things they have to figure out are so interesting. Michael Porter Jr., Jeremy Grant. It's going to be a great week. Media it Day is. was a success. Training camp is going to be really interesting. We're going to be covering it from start to finish over at DNVR. Yeah, make sure to check out our stuff, thednvr.com. For Brennan Vogt, Adam Ars, I'm Harrison Wins. Talk to you guys soon.